Draft Brewed Black, Milwaukee's favorite premium beer. More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Bavarians is for your man and you too. Oat Leaves tastes good like a beer should. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. That's right. Welcome in, everybody. Thanks for hanging. Thanks for joining. It's the Unfiltered Gentlemen. I am Greg, and I am so excited for this episode. I am being joined by the star of the booze cast, Coley Wyman. Hello, hello. I'm blushing. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks for having me back on. Favorite part of the show. And then, of course, my favorite person in all of the wide world, my wife, Shannon. Hi. Hello. Welcome in. I must say, this is so exciting. This is the first time we've recorded in this studio with people in it, besides just me, in well over a year. Woo! Woo! Yeah, this is great. We're all going to be drinking the same beers. We're going to be talking about the same things. We're going to be staring at each other's faces, for better or worse. It's going to be phenomenal. I'm so excited. Uh, Quick business. Thank you for joining. Thanks for listening. Hope you're all hydrated out there. If you're new to the show, welcome on in. We're so excited to have you. If you're on the socials, make sure you hashtag show us your beers. Tag us while you're at it, too. We like beer porn. Also, cheers and shout out to our top listening city of last week, which is Camarillo, California. Oh, my. Well, hot diggity. That's right. What's up, hometown? Camarillo. We must uh, have some like high school friends out there or something. Could I can't, be. That's where I grew up. I, I cannot tell you. Like I can't go to Camarillo without running into like three people who I don't <laughs> know. I see their face and I... Probably went to high school with that person. <laughs> you know what? I think I made out with that person. Oh, no. Oh, what's their name? Fuck if I know. That small town shit's the worst. Oh, it's goddamn worst. So anyway, shout out to Camarillo. Thanks for uh, listening and thanks for putting out with me, putting up with me, making out with you. Putting not, out with you. Oh thanks my. for putting out, too. Oh, wow. To all the girls in Camarillo who, <laughs> who at one time put out. Uh, it's a great conversation to have with my wife on the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Well, anyways, thank you all for listening. Thanks for joining. Like I said, so, so excited to have people here in studio. This uh, this feels like a whole new world, very Aladdin style. You sound uh, so giddy. You re- you really are happy. Yeah. You sound really giddy about giddy it. Giddy up, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a lot to get to tonight. We have some beers, like I said, that we're sharing, which I love sharing beers. We've got some booze news to get to, some to get some discussions to have. English is already hard. I must admit, it is Memorial Day as we record, so happy Memorial Day. Thank you to all of our fallen for all you've done. Uh, and I apologize in advance for my English abilities tonight. It's <laughs> it is Memorial Day. We've we've had a few. We did some uh, some prehydration before the show started. It was much much needed. So, uh, anyways, I think in order to keep the things rolling, we should get into some main hydration with our beer of the week. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for beer of the week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend, and I say, I think I'll have myself a beer. Feels so good to say this. You two dig in while I read about this beer. <laughs> oh, this feels great. We are drinking Toppling Goliath Mosey IPA. 6.3%, 45 IBUs, has a 413, an untapped, and a very respectable 95 on Beer Advocate. They say mosey down a new path, enjoying an exciting IPA that combines this grapefruit, kiwi, and Sauvignon Blanc grape notes of the Nelson Sauvin uh, with hints of mango and pineapple from the Mosaic hops. These hops were meant for each other, and this beer is meant for you. I love me some Toppling Goliath. First of all, they have like the best gram person in the world whenever you make comments on their stuff. They're hilarious. They always really? respond. Yeah, they're oh, great. Oh, I need to watch those. Oh, yeah. Always tag them if you have a Toppling Goliath beer. Okay. It's phenomenal. All right. What do we think of this beer? Mosey IPA. It is so refreshing, so light. There's no lingering taste. It finishes really clean. It's, uh, it's pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. I like it. Very tropical. Yep, yep. You get a little bit of pith, which I kind of like. It mm-hmm. gives you a little bit of bite. Mm-hmm. Um, it's nice and cloudy. Yeah. And it that has haze. that, like, it's very fruit forward. Yes. But as Nicole said, finish is really clean. Yeah. Yes, yeah, especially for a hazy. Like, it doesn't linger at all. No it's not lingering. chunky, anything like that. This is a perfect welcome to summer beer. Yeah. I. I need to get my hands on this for the pool. That's yeah. all I was like. How do we get more of this? Yeah, we uh, we got this thanks to Tavor. Oh. Hook up from the Tavor. Yeah. Sorry, Tavor. Flex. We miss Flex. We're gonna miss Flex tonight. I know. The Tavor uh, promo code unfiltered. If you're doing some shopping over there, 
And uh, this is great. I always love Topping Goliath. Just like the girl said, it is fruity. It is tropical. Hey, in honor of Scott, it's got hops. <laughs> yeah. It's got fruits. <laughs> it's got fruits. I like it. Uh, it is fruity and tropical. It does clean up oh so nicely on the end. It's got uh, a little more carbonation than you might expect out of a hazy, yes. which I think helps clean it up. I really yeah. enjoy it. Uh, sometimes that's what a hazy is missing. It kind of sits on your tongue too long. And this one does not do that at all. Um, another killer from Toppling Goliath. Not too long ago, we had King Sue and Pseudo Sue back to back. Yes. Oh, yeah. You shared, I think, the King Sue. One of the, yeah, you had and one, I had, I had Pseudo the Sue from, yeah. I think, Tavor as well. Beer match made in heaven. I, oh man, I want this for summer, like all day, every day. This is a great beer. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'm like, I guess I'll get like two of these when I'm ordering on tour. Sometimes I get them like, fuck, sure, like six of these. these I know. Yeah. It's not the worst. It is. Yeah. Buyer's remorse. Yeah. Non-buyer's remorse. <laughs> yeah, you didn't un-remorse. buy enough. Yeah. yeah. Flex gets like a steady su- supply of Top and Goliath out there because he's fairly close. Mm-hmm. They're in uh, Decorah, Iowa, according to the can. Oh, God. There's only like corn and soybeans out there. Iowa's a real fun yeah. place to grow up. Corn, soybeans, and Top and Goliath. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sounds like a blast. Well, uh, welcome to summer with this one, for sure. Uh, speaking of summer, man, and Tob and Goliath and pool beers. First of all, before we get to what we did this weekend, try to go to the pool this this weekend. I don't know about everybody else in all the other states and counties and whatever else, but uh, pool at our complex has been closed since Rona. And uh, they finally opened it this weekend. And I thought, like, all right, let's, let's, go, uh, let's go dip into the old pool. And we even drove by today at like one o'clock. I was like, no one is out there. This is going to be so good. And then uh, Coley and, and Mr. Big Dick over there, they showed up and it was like, all right, here we go. And we showed up at the pool and was like, is this a fucking zoo? Where did all these children come from? <laughs> Nick said so the YMCA many. was there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was like a field trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in his defense, you guys are across the street from the YMCA. We are. That totally. Is not, yeah, yeah. That is so not it makes false. sense. Yeah. It was really unfortunate. I was looking forward to some beers. It was a little bit and, disappointing. Yeah, so. But here's the good part. We're not even into June yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we have the whole summer. That is true. Yeah. We'll go hang out in Lake Wyman. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> We're vacuuming. We're still yeah. vacuuming. It's happening. A little green. Joe with the assist on that one. So, uh, but anyways, back to pool and summer talk. This this weekend, uh, Lake Wyman hosted an event. <laughs> we did. We had a Memorial Day barbecue oh, with so good. Um, it was like twelve people, including Nick and I. Mm-hmm. And oh my god, in person friend gathering was amazing. It was so good to see everyone's face and just mingle outside and pretend that it's over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, we're. Al- I feel like we're almost there. You know, we're getting there, but. It was just nice. I I missed everybody, and it felt a lot n- more normal. I guess yeah. I have to admit, like when you when we asked you, like, "Hey, what's the head count?" Because you know we had to know how much food to bring over. You were like twelve. I was like, "Holy shit, twelve people!" Yeah. And the same, like, there was it's a little. Still probably, I don't know if it's illegal technically. Don't turn me in, but oh, I mean, four people. That's I. I, said I think four. like it was yeah. still six. Maybe is yeah. the, I don't know if it's still six or if you're vaccinated, it doesn't matter. And we were. There were, were only two people there that, well, technically three, but two people that yeah. weren't vaccinated. So and you're outdoors. We were outdoors pretty much the whole time. I yeah. even brought appetizers out. So yeah, I think we did a good job. The shanties up and running. We had DBA mm-hmm. on draft with a matching nice. tap handle for the first time. Yeah, that was <laughs> oh my god! Awesome. No uh, uh, Kona brewing tap handle mm-hmm. for your non Kona beer. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Sancho from Boozecast hooked it up with the DBA. He kit. did. He knows a person who knows a person and. Sometimes you forget how good DBA is. For those who are outside of California, I don't know if you've had a chance to have Firestone's DBA double barrel ale, but that's one of the ones that got me started on the craft scene. Like back in the day, it was like, what's double barrel ale? I'll try it. I think I mainly tried it originally because I figured it was barrel aged Mm -hmm. and boozy. It's great. It's none of those things, but it's delicious. It's uh, it's very light. It's very caramely. It's like five and a half percent. I think it's five or five and a half percent. Because I actually yeah. sent it to one of my Instagram beer friends from back east because they had never heard of it. Mm. You know, someone asked a simple question. What are you drinking? I'm sipping on the keg of DBA. What's DBA? I'm like, oh. Uh, oh, no. Oh, honey. <laughs> honey. <laughs> honey. Let me edumacate you. Yes. Yeah. So that was nice. Uh, Big Dick Nick threw a, a brisket on the old smoker. <sighs> I think that was the best brisket we've ever made. It was Ooh. delicious. <laughs> I'm glad everyone so enjoyed good. Great brisket breakfast the next day. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> and brisket snacks in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. I snuck into the fridge at one point. Did you? <laughs> yeah. 
It's like, oh, I need a quick snack. That's hilarious. He well, came walking. I was like, what are you eating? Our fridge is your fridge. He I said mean, snacks. <laughs> snacks. <laughs> snacks. I didn't make cheese snacks this time, so brisket was acceptable. It's because yeah. I passed out to And I think we snacks. did pretty good. I mean, you know, everyone kind of left by midnight, I feel like, or before. Yeah. By or before midnight, maybe around 11. Mid- yeah. I don't remember. And we only stayed up till 2.30. Yeah. Which that's is like, good. that's early for us three. You know, I think I stayed up till one thirty. Well, okay. You did pass yeah. it on the couch and Shannon yeah. and I continued to talk, but that's okay. I, I pulled a, a Nick and <laughs> no, you pieced didn't. out early. Nick pulled a Nick before you did. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't far behind. He, he just gets up, doesn't say anything, and he face plants on the bed. That's yeah. his, his MO for getting the hell out. Yeah. My biggest downfall of any party is sitting down. <laughs> like, I just, I just don't sit down because as soon as I do... <sighs> It remember, happens. Yeah. Back in the day when I was working the early shift, I'd wake up at like 3.30 in the morning and then like my buddy was just down the street from where I was working at UCLA and I'm like, hey, I'm coming over for a party. So would be like, I'd get up at 3.30, work, go to his place. We'd play basketball, showered up and then party till, you know, four or five, six in the morning. Be up for like 28 hours sometimes. And he's like, why don't you ever sit down? I was like, because you won't see me ever again. Oh, like yeah. that'll be the end of me. You I miss me down. those days. I could not stay up for 28 hours. <sighs> yeah, no. Mm-mm. And when I do it now, like I'm, I'm fucked for a week. Mm-hmm. Like every now and then, like we'll do it in Vegas. It's or like something. the time change. Yeah, it yeah. like messes with you for a week, <laughs> staying up like that long. Mm-mm. Yeah, your body's like, hey, you're in your thirties, <laughs> right? <laughs> the fucker, you're lucky you can still drink. <laughs> Truth. Go to bed, you old fuck. So great party. Thank you very much. Yeah. Glad you guys could attend. Always good times. Uh, what else? So <laughs> no one's gonna get this. This is gonna be just for me. Flex sent me this story, and then he couldn't make it tonight. Um, Buff Bagwell. Any old school wrestling fans, Buff Bagwell was arrested on more than 10 charges over the weekend. Uh, For anybody who sort of was into wrestling in the 90s, which is like Nicole's realm, uh, Buff Bagwell (laughs) wasn't... Well, you were sort of into it, right? Late 90s. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mid to late 90s. He was a quote-unquote star in WCW, the other guys. And then when they got bought out, he did come over initially... And he got fired after his first match because it was such garbage. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. He was a horrible wrestler. He just kind of had that look. And that's why he, he made it as far as he did. Clearly, I've never heard of him. So Exactly. So uh, Cobb County Jail Records show that Bagwell was arrested and charged with misdemeanor driving under the influence of drugs, misdemeanor open container violation, four misdemeanor charges of hit and run, misdemeanor speeding, misdemeanor failing to yield when entering an intersection, misdemeanor giving false name or address or birth date to law enforcement officer. Take a shot every time I say misdemeanor. Uh, Three (laughs) charges of following too closely, misdemeanor reckless driving, misdemeanor driving (laughs) within a gore or median or emergency lane. Oh, my God. I'm drunk already. (laughs) You got to stop. Misdemeanor duty (laughs) upon striking a fixed object. Misdemeanor driving on the wrong side of the roadway and misdemeanor license to be carried and exhibited on demand. So he <sighs> was driving on the right side of the street, went into the center median lane and got those misdemeanors, mm-hmm. traveled across into the wrong lane of traffic yep. and then hit some parked cars. Probably about four. Yeah. Got four counts. Right. <laughs> four. Yeah. Four I'm going to go with four. I'm, I'm going to go with roughly four mm-hmm. parked cars. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh-huh. All while being under the influence of drugs and having an open container. Sure. Oh, and uh, a following too closely as well. Oh, and uh, failed to stop an intersection. So, and he, he gave false information too. So he was like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's like, so my name's Bob he was Smith. Stopped. And <laughs> yeah. Wow, this guy was. Hey, are you Buff Bagwell? No, I'm Scrawny Bagwell. <laughs> but do you think that he just like forgot his address and that was false information given? Could be. It could be one of those things where like, you know, in a high speed chase, the guy gets arrested and then they tack on like every stoplight he blew right. through. Like he right. could have been like stopped for one major thing. It's like, oh, by the way, you did this and you did this and you did this. So uh, Ooh, that's um that's a rough night. Yeah, that's a lot of misdemeanors. But was Who's it on drunk? a Tuesday? Oh, that's oh, a good question. what date? Yeah, we have to look oh, that up. This is important. Because it seems to go down on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. Well, it goes down on a Tuesday because people are going up on That's a right. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> well, to those who don't know, Buff's catchphrase was always, I'm Buff and I'm the stuff. And so Flex sent me the story and all he said was, I'm Buff and I'm on the stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Could not have been more accurate. So. That's hilarious. Yes. You're missed, Flex. I know you would appreciate that one. Well, since you sent it to me, of course. So um, anyways, that's that's a little Buff Bagwell news. 
In other news, Big Beer, in quotes, craft, mm. uh, so fake okay. craft, volume declines 5% in 2020. They were down to 8.2 million barrels of production. Boo. Yeah, I can tell you my heart is weeping. Yeah. I wonder if that's because of with Corona and everything, people were actually supporting like their local breweries more and being like, screw going to the grocery store. Like, I want to support local so these places don't go under when everything starts to go back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. That was my hope. And I was going to bring that up. Like, I, you know, more than ever was like, I'm only buying from the breweries. I'm not yep. going to mm-hmm. Vons or whatever to get to get beer. So uh, I hope that's the case. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. That's my hopes and dreams. Well, California, I didn't... um a piece on the booze league podcast a couple weeks ago Mm -hmm. about beer by volume in states and stuff and like per capita Mm -hmm. and california i think was number one i think Mm. number one or number two yeah i think we took number one there were two different like it was by like mapped out Mm -hmm. and whatever like the darkest color was the most and i think that was california so we were killing it we definitely have more breweries than other we do that's uh that's a definite fact well, they also made it easier to purchase beer and have it shipped to you from breweries that we normally couldn't get beer from. Mm-hmm. So right. we were able to order beer from other breweries in California and try things out. Yeah, I mean, and- we jumped on that Humble Sea uh, hops, Hop Box or whatever they called it. Yeah. And I remember when uh, uh, hand sanitizer was scarce, Mike Hess was making hand sanitizer. Oh, yeah. so we ordered some Mike Hess and some of their oh, sanitizer. That's great. Yeah. It was great until we found out that uh, we mm. read some things recently. In the in the reckoning, mm. that's unfortunate. Um, but yeah, it, it the Rona was really good for beer shipping. Yeah, <laughs> if nothing else. Well, in delivery, like they'll de- the local breweries yeah. will deliver to yeah. our door. Did think, a little yeah. knock knock, and I was like, oh sweet, my beer's done. It's there. Yeah. All right. Anagram's got me on speed dial. At oh this my point. god. Yeah, and even yeah. the beer fests, which Topa was a great Topa. thing, where they delivered yeah. all like 14, 12 to fourteen beers to your doorstep, and mm-hmm. yeah, surf you and could suds. log on. Yeah, Surf and Suds did a great job. I yeah. do have to give them a shout out. Great job. And we last did year. Um, East Brothers uh, Festival Box, where they sent oh, down like yeah, a, that was a really flight fun. with their little plastic like festival cup and super the, fun. Uh, and the neck nosh pretzels, pretzels yeah. which is where we first met Erica through that that box. So. Um, yeah, it was, uh, not all bad things happened with, I mean, obviously Rona was horrible, but, uh, the beer part of it, that's some good things. And now California is trying to pass the law permanently to allow to go sales and delivery of alcohol. That would be I'm amazing. here for it and cocktails to yeah. go and stuff mm-hmm. from restaurants. That's, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. We, we hit up a ran- wood ranch a few times during the Rona and got some of those, uh, old, old fashions. fashions. Oh God. They were good. Really delicious. And you know, restaurants make a killing with their alcohol anyway that's really like where a lot of them make their money it's not right. on the food it's alcohol so yeah much bigger problem allowing there. alcohol cocktail like or whatever cocktails to go or beer to go i mean oh my god yeah well, especially and- not everybody is comfortable with going back yet or they haven't had a chance to get mm-hmm. vaccinated or whatever they're not comfortable with it so why not but sometimes you just want a cocktail and you don't want to buy all the shit to make it and right. when you can buy it somewhere and take it to go and you know it's a great crafted cocktail why not i don't yeah. know i'm yeah. here for it and you don't have to drive home after. Precisely. Yeah. Sometimes you want to eat good food, but just sit in your jammies. Yeah. Food and cocktails. I don't always to go. want to put makeup on to go out. I right. know. I just. Sometimes yeah. when it goes up on a Tuesday, I want it to go up from my couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please don't sure. get behind the wheel. Right. Just saying. So, uh, yeah. So hopefully that goes. Uh, and then along those same lines in the opposite direction, the Chicago mayor is proposing a permanent curfew on off premise alcohol sales. A proposal by Mayor Lori Lightfoot. Sounds like a porno name, right? Yeah. Lori yeah. Lightfoot. Uh, to keep a liquor sales curfew that was put in place during the pandemic is coming under fire. The mayor is pushing the idea of a 10 p.m. cutoff oh, for that's package some sales. Garbage. That's some bullshit. The mayor defended her plan, saying that it's a quality of life issue in some areas, citing that she thinks a curfew would prevent people from loitering around stores that sell alcohol and calls it a safety concern. Do you just hang out outside the liquor store? Is that a thing? Isn't that where you drink all your drinks? No. Out your, of a paper Mickey's bag? Yeah, you don't you don't get the grenades, the Mickey's grenades <laughs> and drink it out of a paper bag <laughs> and grumble at people that walk into the store. Yeah, that's not my thing. <laughs> no? no? You don't wear like a big trench coat and just loiter? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. No. Loitering in general is not really my jam. Yeah, I don't... I mean, look, I don't... Do normal people loiter? I, I don't know. Where was this? Chicago? Chicago. I mean, do I don't know what Chicago's a big city. I, mean, I don't half know the year it's I've cold. never been there. It is cold. I don't know much about it. Yeah, who's loitering in Chicago in yeah, December? Yeah, oh, the winter. Burr. <laughs> Burr. I, I mean, I, 
That's ridiculous. Uh, Lady Lightfoot over there needs to slow her roll or whatever her name is. Lisa Lady Lightfoot. Uh, Lisa would be fitting, but it's Lori. Lori. Oh. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Nailed yeah. it. Very inside joke. <laughs> Good job. Uh, yeah, I, I I think it's silly and you're hampering people's abilities to sell alcohol. Yeah. Easy. Especially, I mean, containers to go. It's not like you're at sure. a, you're serving alcohol at later times and keeping people out and mm -hmm. inebriated. And how, I mean, again, with everything that happened, how do they expect these places to make up for lost revenue over the past 15 months if they're going to limit a curfew on alcohol? And I know we've talked about this a lot on the show recently, but like the weird states like Utah that you can't like buy booze on Sundays and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. or, or now possibly Chicago, you can't get it after 10 o'clock or it's, it's ridiculous. Like, it's so weird. It's what, what year are we living in? These are all, you know, shit from the prohibition and mm -hmm. get over yourselves. It, maybe what about like a hard, I don't know, I say like a, a spirits mm -hmm. ban after 10. Even that's stupid. Like just 10 PM is like when the party's getting started. Right. Well, but, and I'm in my 30s saying that. Well, not you on can a Tuesday. Still go to I think a they restaurant? crash into your house at like that, 8. That's true. Yeah. I mean, you can still go to a restaurant past 10 p.m. And right. I would assume their restaurants don't close at 10. Maybe they will now. Or no, their this bars. Is, this is for to-go only. Yeah, I don't get Packaged it. Packaged sales. Like, it's, I mean, gosh, how many times have we been out somewhere and been like, oh, let's go to Venture Liquor and right. grab alcohol to go to our house? Like, right. Or, or beer. Like, we just say we don't, have a, we don't have the keg on tap and we just, yeah, that's nutty. Well, a lot of times we're doing it to be quote unquote responsible because like we've been out, we've had a couple. And so now we shouldn't continue to drink out anymore. No, we should have to drive. Mm -hmm. So let's hit up the, the liquor store by your house and uh, get some beers to go and, and not always before 10 o'clock. So yeah. I think it's silly. Uh, before we move on, old timey word of the week. Sorry to all the Tonys out there, but it's Tony. 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 Apparently it is a silly fellow or ninny. What's a like a cotton headed ninny muggins? <laughs> yes. What is that? Really? What's a ninny? Let's look it up. I'm going to pass you this beer. Okay. Silly fellow sounds like um kind of like a southern Oh, he's a silly fellow. Yeah. Or the way that people say precious. Oh, precious. Mm. Precious. A ninny is a foolish person. Okay. So he's a fool like an idiot. Mm -hmm. What a fool. Yeah. A ninny. Yeah. Sorry, Tony. Oh. You're quite the ninny. I guess. I wonder, what did what did Tony do to anybody? I don't know. Oh man. Yeah, stick with Anthony. Don't shorten it. Um. All right. Before we make a call to the pen, one more story here. Free beer. Enough said. For vaccinated residents of Minnesota, all you have to do is show your card, your vaccine card, to members of the craft beer. Excuse me, craft brewers guild, and or the Minnesota Distillers Guild. And they're giving out free pints for people who uh, have their vaccine. I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah, I wish California would start doing more of that, free pints. Yeah, that'd be nice. All right, let's uh, before we wrap things up with a couple more stories, let's make a call to the pen. I love that we can all make a call to the pen. We're all in the same room. <laughs> this is phenomenal. Here's a little music. He calls to the bullpen for beer. Oh, so excited for this. Nicole was nice enough to bring this over, so I'll let her read the goods. Yes, so this is by Mountains Walking. Oh, this is Sweet so Peach Cobbler. 6% alcohol, 4.17 on untapped. Can I just say, Peach Cobbler was my favorite baby food as a child, and 36 <laughs> years later, I still remember that Gerber taste, and it was my favorite. And this smells to me like how it smelled and tasted. Yeah. Um, it smells like you open up a can of peaches. Oh, my right. God. It's, oh. it's incredible. Um, so just based on the smell alone, it's a dessert-style smoothie, sour ale, brewed with toasted oats, lactose, and cobbler crumble from our friends at Wild Crumb Bakery. Hmm. We then conditioned this beer on 1,500 pounds of peach puree and a complimentary amount of Saigon cinnamon. Mm. So I totally get the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I almost get, like, vanilla from it, too. Hold on, I'm gonna take another sip of it. It is it is so thick you cannot see through it. It looks like a well, hazy. it reminds me of that like pure peach like nectar juice that we used to get when we were kids. Kerns. Kerns mm -hmm. nectar. Exactly. But here's the thing, there's like the most mild amount of carbonation and it's tart. It's not sweet, like thick, like wreck your stomach type yeah. of nectar. Yeah. 
Oh, I wish I would have bought two of these. <laughs> yeah, it's delicious. This is, I got wayward of Tavor, of course. Right. And if you like wow. pie, I feel like it. Do, it tastes like a tart pie. peach pie. Yeah. yeah, and like the tart in the best way possible. I can't. Wow. Yeah, it smells like straight up peaches, mm-hmm. but you get in there, like you said, it. It's got that tartness, which is very welcoming, and the cinnamon and the vanilla kind of lend a little warmth. Absolutely. To it, kind of like warming spices. And yeah, it's like drinking the inside of a pie. I feel like it finishes with a little toast too. Mm-hmm. So you get just a little bit like of like that pie crust toast. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Parker. This is absolutely incredible. I am I am tears because <laughs> I didn't get another one. It is so good, but I'm glad you guys could share it with me. Thank you for sharing it. Of course. My apologies to everyone out there because now my it mouth is, is going delicious. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. I'm gonna sip on some water to I actually think that the tart makes it easier to drink absolutely it balances out yeah, the this super could be sweet. really sweet yeah it could be too much mm-hmm. and, and i don't like sweet beers like even yeah. some of the smoothie style sours that i get if they're too sweet i'm like mm. yeah i've heard there's this one that has a dog on it i'm like the name escapes me but they're like super trendy right now and someone was telling me that they're they're kind of sweet and i'm just mm-hmm. i don't know i'm not in i'm not into that but this is phenomenal oh, life's yeah. about balance you need mm-hmm. balance That's right. absolutely and it's about great beers. <laughs> this one. Um, oh, speaking of weird. So thank you for sharing, by the way. Of course. Not to move on too quickly. Speaking of weird times and buying booze and all that stuff. As of September 1st. Congratulations, sexist. Te- wow, Texas. Oh, sexist? What? Congratulations, sexist. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. Congratulations, Texas. Let me over enunciate. Uh, you will be able to buy beer and wine starting at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Ooh. Instead of what used to be noon. They're trying to save brunch. I, that's yeah. I'm here what I for it. I was just going to say. Yeah. It's the saving of brunch. Yeah. I am here for this. When are you going to Texas, Coley? Labor Day. Oh, you're going to miss it. Oh. When does it start? September yeah. 1st. No. When's I, Labor Day? Uh, Early September. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking it was like the last weekend of so, August. No, no. We leave on Friday the 3rd and we come home on Tuesday the 7th. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. I need you as an assignment. To go buy some booze at like ten oh five on a Sunday. I will do my best. I am going to be at like a lake house, so I don't know mm. what's close. I don't. I'm not. Look, guys, not really familiar with Texas, so yeah. that's why we like you. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> can you at least brunch while in Texas? I mean, I'll do my best. It might be cabin brunch. Yeah. Brunch but, is brunch, but brunch right? is brunch. As yeah. long as there's champagne involved, mm. I mean, like Shannon said, I'm here for it. I'm here yeah. for it. <laughs> yeah. Get that champagne for your campaign. That's oh. Can you imagine me just holding a bottle floating down the river in an inner tube? I mean, yes. I does it can. get much yeah. better? I've, just, I've seen you on a boat. Wonderful. <laughs> you, you sure have. <laughs> Straight out the bottle, guys. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't need a mixer. I don't need a cup. Just give me the champs and give me a raft. Yeah, we've definitely yeah. forgotten juice on the boat. Yep. Zip fizz works just as Zip well fizz. that we have learned. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like a little champagne and energy drink. Mm-hmm. Get your heart started in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Yowzes. <laughs> uh, a sleepy hollow lieutenant has been accused of driving drunk and other things. Sleep- Elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> Sleepy Hollow Police Chief Anthony Brady confirms to News 12 that a department lieutenant who is accused of driving drunk and having sexual intercourse in a police vehicle is now suspended. Oh. The lieutenant is accused of inappropriate behavior with a subordinate officer in an unmarked cruiser while both were off duty in April attend- attending work-related celebrations. The lieutenant and officer allegedly involved face disciplinary action. Hmm. Got drunk and did it in the cruiser. This is very Super Troopers. I'm thinking of Ursula. I, well, I was going to say thing. like a movie. Like Sleepy Hollow is very movie set-esque. Well, yeah, wasn't it with the... The Legends of Sleepy, Sleepy Hollow. Hollow. Yeah. Yeah. With the... The pumpkin head guy. Right, the headless exactly. horseman. Headless there we go. Yes, the pumpkin yeah. head guy. The pumpkin wasn't guy. David has pumpkins. I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Things are just spouting out of my mouth. It's um, worst David spot. Pumpkin. <laughs> I love David oh, as pumpkins. Who doesn't? Oh, so good. But come on. What's what's so wrong with, you know, you had a couple beverages. You're off duty. It's the fact that it was probably a, a city or county owned car. It yeah. definitely was. But they did it in Super Troopers. And it's unmarked. It's not like it's like a black and white parked on the side of the road rocking back and forth. Wouldn't you know? that be great? They it's just like a black hit... Suburban or something. They actually hit the flashers. <laughs> oh, <God>. Woo! <laughs> lights and sirens. Oh. <laughs> Fireworks, lights, sirens, you know. Yeah. Was that her or the car? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we'll end it with this one. I've been looking forward 
to share this story. A man drunk texts a South Carolina aquarium. Oh. Uh Uh-huh. He has some questions. Sure. The South Carolina Aquarium on Monday shared a screenshot of messages sent to the Ask an Aquarium Educator number from a slightly (laughs) inebriated but curious man. (laughs) <laughs> this is gonna be so good let's be honest they brought this on themselves <laughs> yeah they I published mean, a phone number to text what did they think was gonna happen <laughs> do so, we have this number oh i wish we did i bet we could get it i mean they, yeah. they obviously made it public at some point oh i know what i'm gonna ask them <laughs> what are you gonna ask them there's a line from a movie i think it was called night shift i think henry winkler was in it and some other person and i can't remember which one said it and this sounds horrible but they were looking at fish in the tank, and he's like, what if we just fed the fish mayonnaise so we wouldn't have to, like, mix it to make tuna? It's like, just feed the fish mayonnaise. That was, like, <laughs> oh, his whole, like, no. get-rich-quick plan. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Awful. So yeah. maybe they could, you know, he's, can you feed the fish mayonnaise to, like, lessen the process of <laughs> making tuna fish? Them. Yeah. Oh, dear. So here's what the man texted him. He started with, I'm currently at the corner of market and meeting. What would I have seen around me 10,000 years ago before the area was settled by humans? Also, when was the first... When was this area first settled? Is there something unique to the Low County and that those who study marine life are fascinated by? On what subjects do marine biologists disagree? There must be things generally agreed upon, but what theories are currently being debated? Also, why do seahorses grab anything they can with their prehensile tail? Big word for someone who's been drinking. He sounds really articulate. Right? Uh, And why should I only eat oysters in months that contain the letter R? which I'd never heard before. Uh, so they finally had a chance to respond. He, he, those were like rapid fire, one after another. He said, Hi, thank you for all your questions. 10,000 years ago, South Carolina would have seen uh, the end of the Ice Age with uh, something that I can't read, and things went extinct. They accidentally crossed out too much. There's also debates surrounding the purpose of keeled scales on snakes and many more. Seahorses like to use their tails to hold on because they aren't very good swimmers and they may get tossed around the currents if they aren't holding on. As for oysters, this rule, quotes, comes from the fact that bacteria that is harmful to humans is more likely to be present during the warmer seasons that do not end with an R. Waiting for the months that end with an R also allows for spat, which are baby oysters, to reach an appropriate size and for populations to recover before harvest. The man responded, thank you so much for all of your answers. My wife should be happy. I drunk text aquariums and not other women. And they responded, of course, thank you for all your fun questions. Your wife is a turtly lucky lady. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, those were not actually stupid questions. No, they I thought really it was going to be like inappropriate be, yeah. yeah, they're actually extremely questions. intelligent questions. Or like questions. A, just, just a dumpster fire disaster yeah. of questions. Right. Like, they were really intelligent and like legit questions. Yeah. I was waiting for like, so are you hot? <laughs> and like that kind of stuff. Where can oh, I, no, I, where thought can it was I find be like Nemo? You were... Sexual fish questions was my, oh. the way I was thinking. I thought he was going to start hitting on whoever was on the other line of that phone. <laughs> Men are awful. <laughs> no? Okay. I definitely thought it was going to be like dolphins humping or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be good. I mean, they are the only mammals besides humans that, that have, have sex, sex for, for pleasure. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And there have been cases of them trying to hump scuba divers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And seals yeah orcas do some terrible things to baby seals <clears throat> oh yeah yeah it's not yeah. fun things anyway so, moving on yeah I love it. we to... took it in the like sexual direction yeah. he's totally legitimate in his question yeah this guy's asking real we're, we're all <laughs> fucked up over here <laughs> <We've> dolphins been... <laughs> hunt people <laughs> <laughs> we've been drinking okay it's fine it is true so uh, we saw some whales last week when we were in san diego it was amazing i don't think i shared that part on the show where our hotel was on the water Saw some some whales at night. We may have been uh, very inebriated, and so I'm not making it up though. But we're sitting on the balcony; they're floating by. That's very nice. We heard their little. <gasps> <gasps> oh yeah, there's what is it? Their blowhole, blow their hole. spout. Yeah, yeah, we heard that first, and That's I was so like, "Cool, there's something out there. There's something you on the just wing." Saw them just breach out of the water just a little bit. That's mm-hmm. so cool. There yeah. were at least three or four of them. They're so majestic, even though they're like big and you can hear them they're just i don't know that's so cool i'm surprised to see them in the bay yeah i mean not that it's like shallow but i googled it though and they said that san diego bay gets marine life specifically in the evenings because Mm. there aren't as many boats and people out it's quiet yeah 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 well it was pretty phenomenal so uh that's all i got that's it all right 
Thanks for hanging. Thanks for drinking. Yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. I, I can't tell you how great this was. I People so excited person. I get to record with get Shannon. To, get to see everybody. I, and we're in person. Oh, it's the best. It it's going to make my editing life so much easier. <laughs> <Her. laughs> we we'll peek behind the curtain. Fun times. Fun times indeed. We're so, here for it. Yeah, me too. I made a little music here. So thank you all for hanging. Thanks for listening. You guys can find Coley on the Booze Cast and on the Grams. Ice Cole, C O L E, beer underscores after each one. She's doing our best to confuse us. Uh, you can find Shannon on the Gram where? Beer Harmony? Beer Harmony. Follow her, Beer Harmony, on the Gram. Uh, and you know how to find the Gents, the Unfiltered Gentleman, and 80553 Beer is the number to call or text. Leave us a drunk voicemail, please. And uh, I think that's everything. So I hope everyone had a great Memorial Day weekend. Hope everyone was extremely hydrated. I, I know the three of us were, mm-hmm. <laughs> without question. Uh, so on that note, good night, everybody. Good night.